Hi and welcome to the second part of the core data tutorials. Uh, if you have not checked out the first part, I highly recommend that you do so because the first part actually introduced you to what is core data, what are the different layers of the core data. And in the second part, we are going to set up the core data stack. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the, the model file. Now we are creating a very simple to-do list application. And in the first tutorial, I actually showed you that what model files are. They have they are to model the, the basically the classes and model your domain. Uh, so you create those model files. All right. So in this case, we have a simple uh, task entity which can contain a title and uh, its completed boolean flag, as you can see. Um, and now we are going to set up the core data. Now one of the things that people do is that they start writing code uh, to set up the core data stack right in the app delegate file. And that's not really a good practice. You, you must keep your app delegate uh, as clean as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a core data manager that's uh, going to initialize the core data stack. Core data manager. So here we go, we have a core data manager and I can actually add a static function. I can say initialize core data stack. And I can go ahead and build this. Now, if I want to initialize the core data stack from the app delegate, then I'm just gonna say core data dot initialize core data stack. Instead of writing all the code that I'm going to write in the initialize core data uh, stack, instead of writing it over here, I'm going to write everything in the initialize core data stack function. Okay. So what is the first thing that we need to do? The first thing that we need to do is to get a URL of our little friend over here, the model classes. So this will have all the models of your application. It can be a task. If you are making some sort of a grocery app, it can be grocery categories, grocery items, uh, things like that. Okay. So right now our model only contains one entity, which is a task, which has a title, and which also has a Boolean flag call is completed. So let's go ahead and load that. So I'm going to use the guard let model URL, and you can simply access it using the, uh, the bundle and URL for resource. And what is the name of the, the file? It's called list data model and the extension is not XC data model ID. The extension is MOMD because that's like the compiled version of it. So you're going to use MOMD. All right. And then if it, this is not found, I can simply throw an error and I can say that fail to initialize uh, list data model. Okay. In the app bundle. So at this point we will have our model URL. So now we can initialize the manage object context. So let's go ahead and initialize the manage object context equal to NS manage. Uh, and one thing you're going to do is import core data. So we can use the classes and all these stuff associated with core data. So manage object uh, model, not the context manage object model and you will see that it's, it's going to use a URL so I can simply say model URL and of course we also have to make sure that if we don't initialize it we fail initialize manage object model all right all right, so finally those two things are done, pretty easy, right? And the next step, we are going to initialize the persistent store coordinator. Now the persistent store coordinator is basically used to save, delete, update, uh, selects, uh, and all kinds of different things, but we don't really access the persistent store coordinator that much. It actually runs behind the scene because we are always using the NS fetch request to do all that or NS fetch view controller to all of those things. So this is how this is initialized. You're just going to pass in the manage object model. 
So at this point, you have the persistent store coordinator initialized, and now you need to tell the persistent store coordinator that where you're going to write the data. Is it going to be an XML file? Is it going to be in SQLite? Is it going to be binary data? So in our case, we are going to use the SQLite, but we have to tell it to how to do that. And there are multiple ways of doing that. You can create a file manager, and then you can have a documents URL, and you can provide that. But we want to make sure that the user does not feel any slowness or sluggish, uh, slugginess when, when they are actually doing that. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a background thread to get it working, to get it initialized in the background so it doesn't interfere with what the user is actually doing. So I'm just going to do a default priority queue. Oops, here we go. And now I can simply say uh, dispatch async. I can pass in the queue and the block. Now, since this is a trailing block, I don't really need that. I can simply say like this. Let's go ahead and build it. Everything is good. And now inside over here, I can go ahead and initialize uh, my file manager and get the URL for the documents directory because this that is where we are going to put our database in the documents directory. So here we go. We are going to use file manager .url for directory, document directory in the user domain map, which will be slash users, uh, and then we get the documents directory. So at this point, we have the documents directory. Now we need to create a stored URL. So I'm just going to say stored URL equals to documents URL dot URL by appending path component uh, list dot SQL light. And you can actually print it out. It's a good idea to print it out so that you will know that where you have actually written it out. And now the final step is to actually uh, add the persistent store coordinator and basically telling the persistent store coordinator that okay you will be using SQLite okay so let's go ahead and do that I'm just going to copy it and here we go so here we go we're using add persistent stored with type and which is SQLite let's go ahead and build this everything good let's go back to the app delegate and we can see that this is being called so that's also good let's go ahead and run it So here we go. The application doesn't really do anything, but the good thing is that we do have this URL. So let's go ahead to this URL, our path, and see what's going on. So if I go over here, oh, I see that uh, we have a few files over here. So let's go ahead and see what is inside the list.sqlite. And let's see the schema. And if you see the schema, you can see this is your table Z task, which is task basically. And it does have a couple of keys that are added by default, like the primary key and the uh, ENT key and the OPT key. So all of these are added by, uh, by default, but this is the one that you actually added, which is if completed and the title. Okay, so you can see this gives you the indication that your core data uh, stack has been set up correctly, the database has been created, and everything looks good. So that's pretty much it. That's what you need to do to initialize your core data stack so that you can use it later on in your applications. Hope you like it. Thank you very much.